the focus of this video is going to be on simple interest. So whenever we're talking about interest, it just depends on if it's a borrowing situation or an investment situation. If it's an investment situation, then interest is the amount of money that we get paid for lending or investing money. Whereas if it's um, a borrowing situation, then it's the amount of money that we pay, in other words, that we're being charged essentially for borrowing the money in the first place. In the simple interest formula to come, this is gonna be denoted by a capital I, so it makes sense, I for interest, just think. Now where simple interest is different than compound interest is that simple interest is calculated once. And I have that in bold up here. So just one time for the whole investment or loan. So like for example, a credit card is not simple interest. Credit cards are going to be a compound interest scenario. And typically that compound interest is a monthly basis with most credit cards, so the interest is recalculated each month. Um, whereas you can see the difference with that versus simple interest. Simple interest, that interest is just calculated one time for the whole duration of the loan, and you already know, okay, this is the amount of interest I will be charged. It doesn't fluctuate, you're not recalculated or recharged with interest like in a compound interest situation. Now for simple interest, the simple interest formula, which we can see in the yellow box that's around the middle of the screen here, we're going to need three pieces of information. We're going to first need to know the principal, which we'll call that capital P for principal. And this is going to be the amount of money that we deposit or borrow. Again, it just depends on if it's an investment situation um, or a uh, borrowing money situation. But that's the original amount. Just think the original amount of money deposited or borrowed is your principal P. Original amount. I'll just put AMT for amount. You're going to need an interest rate rate. So this is going to be a percentage. Most textbooks will refer, not all, but most will refer to this rate with a little r. Um, just be aware that some textbooks might call it APR. Same thing, tomato, tomato. So whether they call it little r or APR, that's your rate. That percentage is what you're being charged. Now just like with the last section, before you ever, ever uh, use a percent in a formula, it needs to first be converted to a decimal. So that percent needs to be converted to a decimal before it gets plugged into this formula. And then finally, we're going to need to know a period of time. So how long is this loan or investment going to be? Now for our textbook, Typically, we need to make sure that time, which is going to be represented by a little t here, is in years because our interest rate or our APR is going to be annual and we want to make sure our units match. So that is where um, the My Math Lab is going to try to trick you sometimes and we need to be on alert is make sure that the time is given to you in years. It should literally say years. If not, you need to first convert your time to years. So if you look below this yellow box, if they give you the time in days, you're gonna take that number and you'll divide by 365 since of course there are 365 days in a year. If they give you the time frame in weeks, you will need to divide that number by 52 because there are 52 weeks in a year. And then if they give you the time frame in months, divide that by 12 because obviously there are 12 months in a year. And again, this is to convert your time to years. So time has to be in years to match the annual uh, in years uh, interest rate to match that unit in the formula. So for our textbook, make sure, cannot stress that enough, 
your time is in years. So the official formula to calculate simple interest I is you're gonna take the principal times the rate times the time, that's it. So you just simply multiply those three pieces of information together or simply put I equals PERT, P-R-T, to imply that multiplication. But again, keep in mind that rate needs to first be converted to a decimal only and make sure your time is in years before it gets plugged into this formula. So let's go ahead and see this formula in action. I am looking at example one at the bottom of the screen. It says a student took out a simple interest loan for $1,800 for two years at a rate of 8% to purchase a bicycle and a laptop. What is the interest on the loan. So they're not asking you, okay, what's the full amount the student has to pay back? All this wants to know is just simply what is the interest they're gonna be charged for borrowing the money in the first place? So we want, they're talking about simple interest. They want the interest, so that tells me I am gonna eventually use this formula. I equals PERT, so I equals principal, times rate R, times T, curvy T there for time. Off to the side, let's figure out what we're gonna plug into P, R, and T. So principal P, the original amount borrowed for the loan was $1,800. The interest rate that they are gonna be charged is 8%, so that's R, uh, again, though, keep in mind, before it goes into the formula, convert it to a pure decimal. So move that decimal point two hops to the left. So here's hop one, hop two, and we see that 8% is really 0 .08, and let's drop the, dec the percent, I mean, symbol. So 0 .08 is going into R. I strongly encourage you, do not put the zero in the whole number spot because I see so many times when students do that in the calculator, they make a mistake of where to put the decimal point. So unlike your science courses, do not put 0 0.08 into the calculator, just leave it as 0 0.08. You're less likely to make a mistake that way. And then finally, the time T that needs to go in here is two years. We wanna make sure it's in years is the catch, and it is. So you leave it as the number two. So time T is gonna be equal to two. All right, so now we know what to plug in. Let's go ahead and plug it in, plug it in. So interest I equals, we said the principal is 1800. Goes into P, I'll just put it right below the P there. I'll use parentheses for times, times R. So R is 0 0.08 times the time T in years, which is two. So I'm going to do 1800 times 0 0.08 times two in the calculator. And it should come out nicely to 288. If you wanna check it in whatever calculator you're using. So 288. $288 would be the interest alone for the final answer. Now I do want to mention, again, I cannot stress this enough, this is a different um, answer than if they had asked us, okay, what's the total amount the student's going to have to pay back for the loan? Because the total amount of the loan, well, they're going to have to pay back the $1,800 they borrowed plus they're going to have to pay back this 288, the interest they're gonna be charged for borrowing the money in the first place. So when they want, when the, the homework wants the total amount they're gonna pay back, that is going to be called future value. And we're going to see that formula later in this video. But just make sure, okay, is it the interest they want or is it the future value they want? Because that is two different calculations. 
Let's try another interest um, question though for more practice. Looking at example two, it says the principal P is borrowed at simple rate interest rate R for a period of time T. Find the simple interest owed for the use of the money. Assume 365 days in a year. And they just give us the numbers to plug in. So P is 5,000, R is 8.5%, T is nine months. So let's just be really careful here. So we are eventually gonna use the simple interest formula. I equals principal P times rate R times time T. But we said before you begin, check two items. First, check your interest rate R. It needs to be converted to a decimal only. So to get rid of the percent symbol, move your decimal point two hops to the left. So here's hop one, here's hop two. It's 0 0.085 is your R. So R is 0 0.085. The other item to check is make sure your time is in years. It's not in this question. It says nine months. So we said to convert from months to years, divide by 12. So take the nine, divide by 12. You don't have to worry about reducing the fraction is the good news. Just go ahead and just leave it as nine over 12. But Nine months is nine twelfths of a year is why that makes sense. So now let's go ahead and plug in all of our numbers. So now we are ready to plug in to our variables. We know that principal P is 5,000. So let's go ahead and swap out P with that 5,000. In the meantime, I'm going to bring down the interest I equals, but here we go, 5,000 gets plugged into P, and I'm just going to use parentheses for times, because PRT means principal times rate times time, so times my rate is 0 0.085. And you don't have to worry about putting the zero in the whole number spot. I know you do that in your science courses, but I've found that when students do that, a lot of times when they're plugging it into the calculator, they make a mistake where the decimal point goes. So just go ahead and leave that as 0 0.085 when you plug this into the calculator here in a minute. There's my parentheses for times. And then times we said, so I just plugged into R, and now I'm going to plug into time t was the 9 over 12. We said you do not have to worry about reducing the fraction, just leave it like that. And you could put that whole mess in just like that into your calculator. If you have a graphing calculator, even better. Keep in mind there are so many free graphing calculator apps for your phone and um, free websites online. You could use, so I'm going to show you what my graphing calculator app on my iPhone looks like. And what's cool about these apps is that the buttons are located in the same exact spots as they would be with an actual graphing calculator. They are free, so you don't have to worry about going out and spending a hundred bucks on a whole new graphing calculator when you can just use your phone app. So here's my app that I use for iPhones. The free app is called Calculator X84. If you don't care for the advertisements, the pop-ups they make you watch, this particular app that I'm using here was $6. This is uh, Graph and Calc 83. Whole bunch of free options are available to you on Android phones as well. But I'm going to type in that right side of the equation, and I'm going to make it look exactly like how I have it written on my paper. So first I type in the 5,000. And I can even use these parentheses buttons right here for times. They're above the 8 and the 9 keys. So parentheses, point, the decimal point is on the bottom row, point zero eight five. Close the parentheses, and you can see it's all on my main screen here. 
and then another left parenthesis, nine fraction bar is really just division, so I just hit the normal division button there, nine divided by 12, close those parentheses, take one more look, make sure it looks exactly like how you have it written on your paper, and then we're gonna hit enter for equals, it's on the bottom right corner, so here we go, enter, and boom, my interest, my simple interest is $318.75 for the final answer. Let me go ahead and jot that down. So interest is $318.75. Now please keep in mind that this is just the interest alone. If this question had said, what's the full amount you'll owe back? If this is like a debt situation, you would have to pay back the original amount you borrowed, which is the, the principal of 5,000 plus this interest, 318 and 75 cents. That full amount that you eventually pay back, that is going to be called future value. And we're going to see a formula that will generate that amount for us later on in this video. But again, for now, this particular formula, I equals PRT, generates just the simple interest amount. That's it. Let's try one more. So I'm looking at example three. It says the principal P is borrowed at simple interest rate R for a period of time T. Find the simple interest owed for the use of the money. Assume 365 days in a year. The principal P is $18,250. The interest rate is 11%. The time frame T is 90 days. Okay, so... Yet again, they want that simple interest amount. Let me go ahead and erase these lines. There we go. So they're asking for simple interest. So immediately we jot down our formula. That's that interest I equals principal P times rate R times time in years T. But before we plug into this formula, we check two items. So the first item is that the rate needs to be converted to a pure decimal. So currently it's 11%. We can assume since we do not see the decimal point that it is just hanging out there at the end of the number. So they get rid of the percent symbol, we need to move the decimal point two hops to the left. So here's hop one, hop two. So this is the same as point 11. Now I can get rid of the percent symbol since I've converted it. So the R we're gonna plug in is actually point 11. The second item to check is that the time needs to be in years. That's so easy to forget about. It is in days. So whenever it's in days, take your number and divide by 365. Since 365, days in a year, of course. So the number was 90. So I divide by 365. So when it says days, we divide by 365. In like the previous example, it had said months. So we divide by 12. If it says years, you just leave the number as is. You don't have to worry about converting it, of course. Okay, so we converted our rate, R, to a pure decimal. We converted our time to be in years, because 90 days is 90 out of 365 days of a year. That's the portion it is of a year. So here we go. Let's plug in. So interest I equals... So swap out your P with 18,250. I'll use parentheses again for times. Your R is 0.11 times your time T is 90 over 365. We
We say you don't have to worry about reducing it. It's just going to get thrown in the calculator anyway. Go ahead and plug that on in to whatever calculator you're using. And if you've done it correctly, when you type in 18,250 times 0.11 times 90 divided by 365, you should be getting $495 as the final answer for interest. Go ahead and try it on your calculator and make sure you are getting $495. The next formula we're going to be using is called the future value formula. And really all this is, is the full amount you will be paying back if it's money borrowed or the full amount you'll have in the account if it's like interest earned for you, like an investment situation. So that full amount, that future value is going to be represented by a capital A and really, if you think about any real life example, you're going to get that principal, the amount you borrowed, plus your interest that's charged. So the full amount, that future value, is really just principal plus the interest. Now, all this next part is doing is just showing you where they're getting the future value formula from. Um because this, what I'm circling in red, is gonna be what your future value amount equals. So let me go ahead and write it down in the space down here because it says the amount due A is called the future value of the loan. The principal borrowed now, P, is also known as the loan's present value. So this P is the principal, it's also called the present value. But here is the formula. You'll want to jot this down on your note packet as well. But that future value or full amount A is going to be principal or present value P times 1 plus R still represents the interest rate. It's still going to need to be converted to a pure decimal times time T, which I'll make a curvy T. And that time still needs to be converted to years. Close the parentheses. So this is the next formula we're going to be using. And if we look above, we see how they derived that formula. So the full amount that you owe, let's say that this is a debt situation. Well, you're going to have to pay back the original principal you borrowed plus the interest you're charged. And then in the next line, all they did was they swapped out interest, simple interest, with the formula from the previous slides. So simple, simple interest was PRT, so they just swapped that out with its formula. And then they brought down that P plus in front. And then they factored out a P from both of these terms. And when they do that, voila, that's where this formula is coming from. But you don't need to be concerned about how to derive it. We are just going to be focused on this course on how to use it. So let's go ahead and jump into example four. It says a loan of $1,060 has been made at 6.5% for three months. Find the loan's future value, round your answer to the nearest cent. Okay, so the first thing I'm seeing is it tells you find the loan's future value. So as soon as I see those words, that's my cue to use our formula. So step one, let's copy and paste that formula. So I'm going to be solving for future value, or the full amount A, equals principal or present value P times one plus rate times time, close the parentheses. So I already know which formula I'm going to be using. Now off to the side, let me just jot down what we're gonna be plugging in. So the, the present value or principal P, that's the original amount of your loan, 
the original amount you're borrowing, in other words, which is the 1060. So P is 1060. I'll jot that off in blue off to the side. And then rate, that's going to be your percent. Your annual rate is 6.5%, but remember the catch, it needs to be converted to a pure decimal. So to get rid of that percent symbol, move your decimal point two hops to the left. Here's hop one, hop number two, I've already run out of room, so I need to insert a zero. So I'm seeing that R is going to be 0 0.065, 0 0.065. Let me write that a little bit nicer. So after converting it to a pure decimal, rate is 0 0.065. And then finally, the time T is three months. We want years. So if it says anything besides years, we need to convert it to years. So time T. So when it says months, take the number and divide by 12 always, since 12 months in a year. So three months means three divided by 12 is getting plugged into the formula. Just like with the last uh, question, the last formula, you can leave the fraction as is. You do not need to worry about reducing it because it's just gonna get plugged into your calculator anyway. So here we go. Future value or full amount A equals, let's plug in all of our stuff here. So the principal P was 1060. Bring down your parentheses, bring down your one plus. Rate R is 0 0.065. Now that's going to be multiplied by time t, so I'm just going to use a traditional time symbol here for that. And time t is 3 over 12. Close the parentheses. Let me erase what we don't need anymore. I have such big handwriting, I'm already running out of room. There we go. Okay, so this mess is what I'm going to plug into my calculator. I strongly encourage you to be using some sort of a graphing calculator app or website just because it's programmed to do order of operations. So you can just type this whole mess in just as is into the calculator and it's going to calculate it for you. If you don't have a graphing calculator yet, you're going to have to work backwards because in the parentheses, you would multiply before you would add. So you'd have to do the 0 0.065 times 3 twelfths first, then add your 1, then multiply by the number outside the parentheses 1060. So it's a lot of extra steps to remember if you don't have that graphing calculator. Let me go ahead and just show you how nice it is when you do have that graphing calculator app to just throw this right on in it. So in your graphing calculator, you're going to go ahead and type in that right side of the equation. So that was 1060. And we can just use parentheses for times. Again, they're right above the 8 and the 9 buttons. So left parenthesis, 1 plus decimal point on the bottom row, 0 0.065 normal times. 3 divided by, for fraction bar 12, right parenthesis. Make sure that it looks exactly like how you have it on your paper. And then go ahead and hit that enter button on the bottom right corner for equals. We're rounding it to the nearest cent, which is two digits out past the decimal point. The digit after where we want to round to is a 5 which means we need to round this up to 23 cents. So $1,077.23 is our final answer. Let me go ahead and write that down. So my, in, my final amount, future value, was $1,077.23. 
and 23 cents. So that was my loan's future value. Let's try one more of these future value questions. Looking at example five, it says the principal P is borrowed at simple interest rate R for a period of time T. Find the loan's future value A or the total amount due at time T. Round your answer to the nearest dollar for a change. So this is our first one where we're going with the nearest dollar or whole number, not cent. Okay, so let's go ahead. As soon as we see that wording, loan's future value, we're going to copy and paste the future value formula. So that's full amount A or future value A equals principal P parentheses for times one plus rate times time. Close those parentheses. And they're just telling you what to plug into this one. So the principal is going to be 2000. So if we want, let's bring down the full amount A equals, let's swap out P with 2000. So just swap that out with 2000. Bring down the times, bring down the one and the plus. Be careful with R here that I'm circling. It needs to be converted to a pure decimal. So rate, the interest rate is 6%. We can assume the decimal point is currently just sitting on the end. So I need to move the decimal point two hops to the left. Here's hop one, hop two, I insert a zero, and I see that the interest rate is actually point zero six times my time t three years it's finally in years yay so i could just leave the number as is i don't have to worry about converting it like the previous question it was in months so i had to divide by 12 to convert it to years but this is already in years so just leave it as three so there we go. You're going to type into your calculator 2000 parenthesis 1 plus 0 0.06 times 3. Close your parenthesis. And if you do it correctly, go ahead and check on your calculator. You should be getting $2,360 as the final answer. $2,360. Example six, a little bit of critical thinking involved in this one. So it says, suppose you spend $4.95 each day, five days per week on a specialty coffee. Then we got two parts, an A and a B. So A, how much do you spend on this item in a year? So we weren't given a formula for this, but we can think this out logically. So the cost of the coffee is $4.95. We're going to be multiplying. So we're, we're spending this five days a week, so times five. And they want to know for the whole year. So this is each week, five days a week. Note that there are 52 weeks in a year. So because there are 52 weeks in a year, I am going to also multiply by 52. So again, the cost was $4.95. I'm multiplying it by 5 because I'm purchasing this coffee 5 days a week times 52 because it's per week. And you want to know how much in a year you're spending. So times 52 since 52 weeks in a year. When you do $4.95... 4.95 times 5 times 52, you should be getting that you spend $1,287 per year on that coffee. So that's the final answer to part A. Now let's go ahead and take a look at part B. So part B, if you invested your yearly spending on coffee in an account with a rate of 2%, how much would you have after one year? So instead of buying that coffee, if you took that same money, in other words, and you put it into some sort of a savings account, 
how much would you have? And the key wording here is they want the full amount. So how much would you have? Not just the interest alone, they want the total. How much would you have? So that's the full amount. We only have two formulas to choose from that we've discussed in this video. We have the simple interest formula, and then we have future value, which means the full amount formula. So they want the whole amount. So that's future value. So go ahead and if you look up that future value formula that was on the last slide, that's A equals P times one plus R T. I make my little curvy T there. And again, this is the future value formula. And what are we gonna be plugging in? Okay, so your principal, the amount you're investing, also known as the present value, is gonna be this 1287 answer from part A. So that's going into P. The rate, R, is the percentage converted to a pure decimal. So 2% is 0 0.02 when you move the decimal point two hops to the left. So point zero 0.02 is going into R, and then your time frame is one year. One year, so one is going into T. So here we go, A equals, we said P is 1287, parentheses, one plus R is point zero 0.02, times the time frame is one year. When you put that into your calculator and you round to the nearest cent, you should be getting $1,312.74. If you wanna go ahead and pause this video and try it, just to verify you are getting $1,312.74 for the final answer for part B. Looking at example seven, it says you borrow $2,500 from a friend and promise to pay back $2,655 in six months. What simple interest rate did you pay round to the nearest tenth of a percent? So we're gonna be solving for the rate for a change and we're given a full amount that we're gonna pay back to the friend, that's the 2655 number. We see what we're originally borrowing, the principal is 2500. So we know that it's going to be the future value formula that we're gonna be using. If you think about it, we only have two formulas to choose from. We have the simple interest formula and then we have that full amount future value formula. So in this case, we can use um, that future value formula. So let's go ahead and jot that down. So the full amount A equals P, parentheses for times one plus R times T, and again, just keep in mind, this is gonna feel a little bit weird because we are solving for rate R, because it says what simple interest rate did you pay? So we're gonna be solving for R, which means we should have A, P, and T already somewhere in this question. And I'll write those off to the side. So let's start with the full amount A. So the full amount you're gonna pay back, interest and original amount combined, is the larger number, so that's the 2655. So the full amount with interest you're gonna give back to your friend. The original amount that you borrowed, the principal, is the smaller dollar amount, that's the 2500. And then the time frame six months, be careful, it has to be converted to years. So because of the word months, take your number and divide by 12. So it was six months, so six divided by 12, it's six twelfths of a year. 
So always, always divide by 12 when you see the word months in your time frame in this section. So let's go ahead and plug in what we have here. So let's see. So A, we're going to swap out with 2655. Bring down the equal symbol. P was the 2500 times 1 plus R is what we're solving for times your time was the 6 twelfths. Now, if you want to, um, if you wanted to clean this up a little bit, because solving for R is a little bit trickier, you could use the decimal instead of the 6 twelfths. So if you take 6 divided by 12, that's the same as 0.5. So I'm going to actually put 0.5 in for T. If you want to leave it as 6 twelfths, that works too. I'm going to go ahead and put it in as 0.5 as the decimal for a change. 0.5 aka 6 divided by 12 is where I got that from is time t. All right, so we plugged in what we have. Our goal is to solve for r, meaning get r by itself. So the first thing we want to do is clean up this mess. Um, if you want to, this r times 0.5, let's go ahead and just rewrite this as 0.5r. Kind of like in algebra, you would not write like x times 0.5, you'd say 0.5x. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit, and we're going to rewrite that as 0.5r. In fact, if you want to just write the whole line again, that works too. So let's bring down the 2655, the equal symbol, the 2500, the parentheses, the 1, and the plus. Here we go, I'll do this in red. All I'm doing is just simply switching the decimal and the letter R just to make it look a little bit easier to read is why. So R times 0.5 or 0.5R, okay. Looks slightly better. So then let's go ahead and clean up that mess a little bit more on the right side. So now let's distribute this 2500 to the two terms in parentheses. So multiply that in. So when I do that, I haven't touched the 2655 on the left side yet, so just drop it down for now and bring down the equal symbol. But here we go. So we have 2500 times 1 is 2500. Bring down your plus symbol that's in the middle. And now, when you do the 2500 times that 0.5 R, well, 2500 times 0.5, when you punch that in the calculator or do it in your head, either one, it's going to give you 1,250, and don't forget the R. So 2500 times 0 0.5 is 1250, and then bring down the R. Keep in mind, again, the goal is to get R by itself. So it's looking better and better with each line. So this positive 2500, let's go ahead and subtract this to the other side. Leave the number glued to R for last to worry about. So subtract the 2500. So now we have 2655 minus the 2500. And that is going to give us 155. Bring down your equal symbol and then bring down your 1250R. Almost there. Getting near the end. So the last step of the equation, divide the number in front of R to the other side. So divide that 1250 to the other side. So R, now just type in this division. So do 155 divided by 1250 on your calculator. When you do that, you should be getting about 0.124. So 155 divided by 1250 is about 0.124. 
point one two four. So that's your interest rate R. We got it. But there's one little extra step at the very end. Remember, rate is always a percentage. So this is a little bit of a change. We have a decimal at the end. We need to convert it to a percent. So thinking back to our previous video, that's when we're going to slide the decimal point two hops to the right. So a decimal of 0.124, when I convert that, here's hop number one, here's hop number two, it ends up being the same as 12.4%. Already running out of room, so I'll just write it up here. So your interest rate was 12.4%. But every single time you solve for rate R, you're gonna end up with some sort of a decimal that will always require at the very end, you convert it to a percent by simply sliding the decimal point two hops to the right. Now I know this; these are trickier questions, so let's go ahead and try one more of these bigger questions just to make sure we have it down pat. Okay, trying another one of these harder solving for rate questions. Example eight, treasury bills or T-bills can be purchased from the U.S. Treasury Department. You buy a T-bill bill for $981.60 that pays $1,000 in 13 weeks. What simple interest rate to the nearest tenth of a percent does this T-bill earn? Okay, so... With any of these types of questions, they're asking for rate, what simple interest rate. They're giving you the full amount you're going to pay back. So these are all clues that we can yet again use the future value formula. I'm going to give a little space here in this one. But that future value formula was A equals P times 1 plus RT. So we are yet again solving for R which means we need A, P, and T. So A, the full amount, that is gonna be the larger of the dollar amounts that in this case you paid back, so the larger dollar amount was 1,000. So the full amount is 1,000. Principal P is the original amount borrowed, so that is what you spent on the treasury bill originally, that's the smaller dollar amount. That's the 981.60. And then time T, which we use that curvy T for, 13 weeks. We want years. So whenever it says weeks, divide your number by 52, since there are 52 weeks in a year. So to recap, in this whole section, you want your time to be in years. If it says months, divide your number by 12. If it says days, divide your number by 365. If it says weeks, divide your number by 52, which is what we did here, so 13 over 52. If you go ahead and type in 13 over 52 into your calculator, it works out really nicely to 0.25. These are the only types of questions, by the way, you'll notice where I'm actually having you divide out your time. So when it asks you to solve for rate, I would recommend dividing your fraction out just in these types of questions alone and use the decimal just because it's a little bit easier to work with in these longer questions. All right, so plugging in, so A was 1,000. Bring down your equal symbol. P was 981.60. Bring down your left parenthesis and your one plus. R is what you're solving for times your time was 0.25. Close your parenthesis. Now, if you think back to the last example, the first thing I did was I just simply switched the order of R and what it's multiplied by. So this R times 0.25, let's just simply rewrite it as 0.25R. So all I'm gonna do 
is put that decimal in front of the R. That's it. I'm not going to rewrite the whole line again. So 0.25R. Okay, there we go. So now we are ready. So then a little bit of algebra in these solving for rate questions. So if you think of the last example, we're going to distribute this number in front next. So bring down the 1,000 on the left side that we have not touched yet. Bring down the equal symbol, 981.60 times 1 is 981.60 again. Bring down the plus symbol, 981.60 times 0.25R. When you punch that into the calculator, the 981.60 times 0.25, you should be getting 245 point four. And don't forget to bring down the R because we're solving for it. So 981.60 times your 0.25 is going to be 245.R. Feel free to pause this video at any time to make sure you are seeing where these numbers come from. You should be typing it in your calculator as we go. All right, remember your goal is to get that R by itself. So let's subtract the number in front of the plus symbol next. So subtract your 981.60 to the other side. You are slowly but surely getting R by itself. So on the left side, 1000 minus 981.60 is going to be $18.40. Bring down the equals, bring down your 245. 4R. Now, last step, divide the number in front of R to the other side. So divide your 245.4 on over 245.4. So now you're going to type into your calculator what I'm circling here, 18.40. Fraction bar just means division, so divided by 245.4. Now you're going to get a really long decimal, so let me go ahead and show you what I get on my calculator screen. So when I type this in, I have the 18.4 or 40, type it in either way, divided by 245.4, enter. See what I mean by it's a long decimal? Go ahead and let's round it. So it's usually three or four digits out to begin. So let's go with three digits out and you'll see why I'm picking three by the end of this question. So if I go to the third digit, remember your normal rounding rules, we look at just the digit after that determines if I am going to round up or not. It is a nine, so I do need to bump this four up to a five. So this is going to become 0 0.075. So it's about 0 0.075, that interest rate. So let me jot that down. So R was approximately, I'll do the little approximately wave since we did round that decimal 0 0.075. But remember that last step. I know it's a lot to get to the R. But your rate R is always a percent. So you always, always have to convert that decimal to a percent. So go ahead and slide your decimal point two hops to the right. So here's hop one, hop two. And we see that it, the decimal point goes in between the seven and the five. So that's 7.5 percent as your final answer. And now we can see why I rounded three digits past the decimal point on the calculator. If I go back to the original question, it says what simple interest rate to the nearest tenth of a percent does this T-bill earn? So it wanted the percent, which was our final answer, to the nearest tenth, which we have. So the tenth spot is one digit past the decimal point. So by me rounding three digits, 
past the decimal point when it was a decimal only, I was planning ahead because I knew I was going to slide that decimal point two hops to the right to make sure that when it was a percent, it would be just one digit past the decimal point. So long story short, whenever your homework wants those percents to the nearest tenth of a percent, start by rounding the decimal just like we did here, three digits past the decimal point, and then it'll work out for you so that your final answer will be formatted how they want it. But 7.5% is rounded to the nearest tenth of a percent. That is going to be our final answer. So our last formula is not really a new formula. We're just solving for a different variable. Um, and that variable is going to be the principal, which they also call the present value, P. So just think you're going to be solving for P. So we're going to be using the future value formula yet again, but now we're solving for present value or principal P. How are you going to know, based on the wording, that you're solving for P instead of A? So you're going to see phrases like, how much should you invest now? Or how much should you put into the account now? Or how much should you deposit now? So in these types of word problems, you already have a final amount or a financial goal A in mind. You are planning for the future in these types of problems and you're thinking about, okay, how much do I invest or put down now? So when you get a word problem in that context, that's going to be your cue that you are solving for P for a change. They're going to give you the full amount or future value A, you are now solving for P. And because you do not want to be even a few cents short of your financial goal, you are going to always round up. And it'll say that in the directions in the My Math Lab round up. So it is not normal rounding rules when you solve for P. So when you're computing present value, always, always round that principle up, always up. So let's keep that in mind. And I'm looking at example nine. Example nine says you plan to save $3,600 for a trip to Europe in two years. You decide to purchase a certificate of deposit or a CD from your bank that pays a simple interest rate of 2.5%. How much must you put in this CD now in order to have the $3,600 in two years round up, so it literally says up there, to the nearest cent? Okay, so look at this wording. How much must you put in the CD now? And you already have your goal in mind. You already know you want $3,600. So what I've underlined here in red, these are clues that you are solving for present value P for a change. So let's go ahead and we're gonna still use the future value formula. So that's that A equals P times one plus R times T, close the parentheses, but it does feel a little bit odd because we know the full amount, the future value A is 3,600. Your rate R, that's always the percentage, but it still needs to be converted to a pure decimal. So 2.5% to convert it to a decimal only, two hops to the left. So here's hop one, hop two, so it becomes 0 0.025 as a decimal only. Let me write that nicer. 0 0.025, and then the time in years, it's two years. So the time here is just leave it as two. Um, because it's already in a unit of years. You don't have to worry about converting this one at least. So we are solving for P. Let's plug in what we have. 
So A was 3,600 equals P is what we're solving for, so just leave it alone. Bring down the parentheses and the 1 plus R is 0 0.025 times your time was 2. Close the parentheses. Okay, so let's go ahead and do in the parentheses first. You have all numbers. If you want to just put this mess into the graphing calculator, that works. If you don't have the graphing calculator yet, you would multiply first. So you would do the 2 times the 0 0.025 first, which would give you 0 0.05. Then you're going to add the 1. When you do all that, you're going to get 1.05. 1 1.05 when you do in the parentheses. In fact, I can go ahead and type it in my calculator and just show you, you can just type it in as is into the graphing calculator app. So in the calculator, you could just type in the one plus point zero two five times two, enter and boom, that's where I'm getting that 1.05 from. What's nice about this graphing calculator is it is programmed to do the order of operations for us so it knows to multiply before it adds that one there. So that's where I got that 1.05 from. And then bring down that P. If you want, you could just leave it in parentheses because it really is just ultimately being multiplied by P. Bring down the equals, bring down the 3600 on the left side you have not touched yet. Now that you've cleaned up the mess in parentheses, remember your goal is to get P by itself. So divide that 1.05 to the other side. So now we're going to do 3600 divided by 1.05. Keep in mind, this is not normal rounding. They want us to round up to the nearest cent. So when I type this in, we got 3600 divided by 1.05. Enter. The nearest cent is two digits out. It's not normal rounding rules when you're solving for P. It even says round up, so just automatically round that up to 58 cents. Because you're planning for the future, you want to make sure you're not even a few cents short of that financial goal. So $3,428.58. Final answer. Jotting that down. My principal. $3,428.58. So that's how much you would need to originally invest to get it up to $3,600 in two years. So $3,428.58. Let's try one more. Example 10. Determine the present value P you must invest to have the future value A at simple interest rate R. After time T, round answers up to the nearest cent. And they just give us the amounts in this one. So A is 2,000, R is 1.26%, and T is 8 months. Okay, so we already know it's a future value. Formula 1, so A equals P parentheses 1 plus RT, so there's my future value formula. Keep in mind interest rate R needs to be converted to a pure decimal, so when you move that decimal point two hops to the left, it becomes 0 0.0126. And then the time needs to be converted to years. It says 8 months. So divide by 12. Whenever it says months, it's going to be 8 twelfths. 
So plugging in, your A is 2,000. Bring down the equal symbol, leave P alone. That's what you're solving for. Parentheses 1 plus R is 0 0.0126 times your T was 8 over 12. So the first step is to clean up the mess in parentheses, which is pretty straightforward if you do have that graphing calculator or the app. When you type in the mess in parentheses into the graphing calculator, you should be getting 1.0084 as your decimal. It's still in parentheses, so I'm going to bring the parentheses down. And the P is still in front of the parentheses. Bring down your equals and the 2,000. But feel free to pause this video. Check it when you type in the mess in parentheses. 1.0084 is what you should be getting. If you don't have a graphing calculator, just think you work backwards. You would do the 8 divided by 12 first then times whatever that is by 0 0.0126, then you would add the one last. Okay, so we have that. Now let's go ahead and um, divide this 1.0084 to the other side. 1.0084. Let me draw the decimal point a little bit bigger here on the right side. I can't quite fit it well because I'm on the bottom of my screen here in my app. But it should say that both sides are divided by 1.0084. So then P, to find P, you're going to take this 2,000. And fraction bar just means division, of course. So you're just going to do 2,000 divided by 1.0084. So go ahead and type that into your calculator, what I just circled here in black pen. And when you do that, you should get a decimal. Please keep in mind, whenever you're solving for P, you round your answers up. And it will remind you of that in the question. In this case, they say round up to the nearest cent, so it is not normal rounding rules. So you automatically round up, and that should get you $1,983.34. So it should round up to 34 cents there at the end. So $1,983.34. Is your final answer for example 10. In the next video we are going to talk about compound interest instead of simple interest.